Welcome to Mastering Life's Adventures, an educational podcast about tapping into your true self, the soul, your soul, the substance of your life, to discover what life's ups and downs are really about, and how to have a greater sense of purpose, peace, joy, and fulfillment. I am Dr. Judith Holder, your host, coach, psychologist, fellow seeker who enjoys diving into the connections between spirituality, psychology, wellness, and your everyday life's adventures, all preparing and polishing you like the facets of a magnificent diamond to be your best self. If you're craving more from your life, you are in the right place. Come, let's journey together and transforming what you know into who you really are. Mastering Life's Adventures begins now. Hi, I'm back. And I'm here to talk about another barrier and roadblock to soul progress. And this one, I've noted it as grumpy grudges. Grumpy grudges. And when I started thinking about grumpy grudges, I also felt that there was some interplay with what I want to call revolving resentment. And so you have the grumpy grudges and evolving resentment. And what are the underlying variables or factors or attributes that relate to these two? But I'm going to be focusing mostly on grumpy grudges. But I think there's still an underlying dynamic where there is a sense of ill will um, that you have towards a person, a situation or circumstance that has happened that maybe becomes grudges, a persistent, as well as resentment, a persistent feeling of um, that the person did something that was not great towards you, that was hurtful that was um, painful in your eyes of what went on. And it could be personally taken or it may have been in a social situation in which that slight or that sense of ill will, feelings that you developed towards that person. It could be a family member. It could be a spouse, which is a family member, but it also could be a colleague or a friend that you've kind of now had this sense of of you weren't treated right. You weren't honored in some way. Honored in your perspective about things. So it really creates these grudges or knowingly or unknowingly, they're actually creating or carving out space for greater hurt, irritation, anger, sadness, irritability, even fear that this person's going to do it to you again, or the situation or circumstance you found yourself in is going to happen again, or you're going to be in a social gathering in which you're going to feel embarrassed again. You're in some type of situation in which you felt the underlying issue is unjustly treated unjustly treated. And so that grumpy grudge starts to form. And you hold this grudge against someone because of what they did, you feel intentionally, but maybe it was actually unintentional, that they don't even know that you're holding the grudge against them. But you're holding it. And when it becomes persistent feeling of this ill will, coming up again because of past or present sense of insult or hurt or injury. Then it's something that is unseen and it can go into our conscious, subconscious levels of our being and just hang out there. And so the next time it happens, it gets a a little bit bigger of a grudge. That pebble turns into a stone. And that stone turns into a bigger stone. And we're not realizing through our thinking processes that because of where we put our attention to is what we gain more experiences around, which I've talked about in previous episodes, 
we end up being like a revolving door thinking about this situation and it's only building up more grudges which leads to greater resentment that is not helpful to your soul and your soul evolution but i'll talk about that in a minute i want to stay on this issue of these qualities that oh this these grudges that open this alley so to speak an alleyway of which we have the sense of anger and frustration and bitterness and um, irritability that starts to happen. And sometimes I think we hold these grudges, and there's many reasons why we hold grudges or we build up resentments. But I want to just talk about three. One is, it may be to a misunderstanding that we're assuming that others are having maybe a negative intent and they're, they're intentionally trying to hurt us. And that may not be the case at all. They don't even see it. It may be a blind spot to them that in some ways what they said or the behavior they engaged in or the way they laughed at, uh, at us, they're, they're not realizing that is building up the sense of a grudge. And what we need to do in certain situations, in most situations, I would say, we need to ask for clarification from people. We need to ask them, was there a reason why you said that that way? Or was there something that was going on that I wasn't seeing that you said that in public when people are around that made me feel bad? No, made me feel inadequate in some way. And when you do these types of conversation on a one-on-one -on -one basis, so you try to talk with a person on a one-on-one -on -one and not in a group, you know, about this impact that it had upon you. So the first is maybe a misunderstanding. They didn't mean it. They were just having some fun, quote unquote. But sometimes their way of having fun may lead to your feeling this degree of grudges, grumpy grudges. And I'll talk about the grumpy in a minute. So that's a possibility. The other thing to take in consideration is with this building of grudges, it can feel, you can feel left out, not included in a social situation, a task, a work project at work, or when you're in a large family and you're having a social function and you feel left out, they're not asking your thoughts and your opinions are not involved in the activities in any way. And so we can, when we feel ignored, that someone is not paying attention to us, that can build up a grudge too, because we start to think about what's the matter with me or what's the matter with this other person. So we get moving into that irritability. And we're moving into the sense that this person is indifferent towards us. That they're, you know, as much as I, we try to be involved and helpful, they still ignore us or don't pay attention to what we have to say or downplay what we have to say. And so we don't realize subtly or overtly it builds up grudges because this, it, it, when this person does it again, and they do it another time, and they do it another time, then it just makes us feel even more so that, that grudge that may move into resentment, that this person is treating us in a particular way in which we feel left out, not included, not involved in the decision or in the activity. And then there is a third way that this can assist itself, these grudges, is, is that a person hurt us in our inter when we were interacting with us in some ways, that they said something. You see how these are all tied together in terms of this feeling, a a feeling that this person is treating us or mistreating us or ignoring us in some particular ways that builds up these grudges and it occurs at an emotional level. It occurs at an emotional level that these feelings just hang out and are in us. And so they can manifest when in a marriage, when we're with someone that we love, 
but this person also has hurt us or done things to us. Maybe they know it and maybe they don't know it because we haven't shared it with them. And so it results in us holding a grudge. And so we hold this grudge, not realizing that it does impact our soul, our interactions, our connectedness to something higher than ourselves, our I am presence, our God source, our creator. It creates this barrier for us because where there is grudges and it moves into that realm of even resentments, it does create over time a hardness of heart. Our heart becomes hardened. That's where that quality of bitterness comes in, that grudges start to create within us. And we have to say no to moving our minds, thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking and this ruminating and this ruminating and moving us into this whole sense of hardness towards the person or the situation or the circumstances. And that hardness can take the form of, I don't care. You do what you want to do. I'm going to do what I want to do. So that hardness is not in the best interest in the long run because if we're developing the hardness of heart, then it says we're trying to protect ourselves. We're trying not to care. But the reality is we do care. So don't move towards the hardness of heart. Move towards curiosity. Move towards curiosity and being willing to ask more questions. And when we are able to do that, we may learn more information that allows us to be able to step out of that hardness and get into the light of understanding. And that's what our soul wants for us. Because what we're trying to really not get pigeonholed into or get into like a pothole around is a sense of injustice of how, when, what, where we've been treated in some way. We're trying not to move there because injustice does not serve us. And we have to know this experience that's happening to me is trying to teach me something about myself and is allowing me to be able to learn, grow, in order to let go of certain things and know that people externally are not the dictators of our life. We have to be in that driver's seat. We have to dictate what we want to go in our lives. We have to be the ones that say grudges or have no space within me. Resentment, which is a higher order, the next order of these grudges, have no place within me. And where there is grumpiness, I have to be able to go after because that grumpiness is telling me there's something else that I need to attend to. And when you think about grumpy, think about someone who is easily annoyed, angered, or discontentment about something, often has complaints that are taking place. So grumpy plus grudges boxes us in into a particular state of being that is not in the best interest for our soul evolution. And so one of the things that you know when grumpiness is showing its head, then you're knowing that when I get grumpy, it is telling me, "Uh uh-oh, something's up. Because usually where there's grumpiness, it's also a code word for a bad mood. And it's also maybe related to a stubbornness about not wanting to let go of something. So we become more stubborn about our perspective about things, about we're being right and the other person's wrong about what they did or said towards us. We become having an unyielding nature in particular ways. We become cantankerous in our demeanor. And then there is this, this, this quality that we just label as grumpy. So then when you have the grumpy and the grudges because of sense of injustice that's being done to you, these qualities, as I said earlier, boxes in the soul. It puts it in a cell, like a, a jail house or a jail room. 
And we have to be the ones to have the key to turn up that door, to open it up, to allow us to walk out of that jail cell. And one of the things we can do is first and foremost know that we do have the key, that we can work on this, and that we do have warning signs that allows us to know when we're getting into that grumpy grudge slash resentment towards thing. We feel it in our bodies. It is a feeling state, emotional state that we feel. And that when we have that, and I would invite you to think about when I move into grudges or move into resentments, what do I notice going on in my body? What do I notice going on with my breath? What do I notice going on around my heart, on my stomach, on my shoulders? It's your tightness that occurs because we need to first understand the warning signs because how we mentally think about things does have an impact on our physical body, our physicality, and how we're feeling in our body. So that's one thing that we can be able to do. The other thing I was thinking about with grumpy grudges Remember the story of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs? And there was bashful, there was dog and dopey and grumpy and happy and sleepy and sneezy. Well, one of the dwarfs was grumpy, right? And grumpy in the story of Snow White um, uh, was, you know, really related to having a bad mood, as I said earlier, and being stubborn about things and actually didn't like Snow White initially and didn't want Snow White to stay at their cabin uh, where they were and had an unyielding nature and could could be irritable. He had the red nose, you know, as well. I invite you to go and see this, uh, this see Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. It's a classic. But he also had a complex character. And that complexity of the character was what I want to talk about as it relates to the soul. Because just as there are many facets to a diamond, there are many facets to who you are. And in those facets, there's some aspects or edges of the diamond that is buffed up. There are some facets of the surface is buffed up. Maybe there are others that are not. And uh, and what you're learning to do with this diamond, which is the diamond of your soul, is to understand what needs to be buffed. Crumpy had some qualities to him that on the surface is what we're talking about, these qualities of the grudges that can happen to a person. But hidden deep down within him, which is talking about the deeper aspects of the soul, uh, is the qualities of that he also had a fierce loyalty to Snow White. Just as much our soul has a fierce loyalty to one to be its best self, wanting to see the good in a situation, needing to be trained and helped to be able to see the greater good. And so with this uh, complexity, and there are kind of uh, dimensions to Grumpy, is what I want to talk about the traits when you think about grumpy, you do think about earnest. You do think about uh, resistance to change and clinging on to a particular belief pattern. Also, with the, the grumpy character, was his quality of loyalty and making sure uh, that he was protecting, a protective quality. And that protective quality uh, is what our soul wants from us, too. Our soul wants to be protected wants to, you to be fiercely loyal to its evolution and growth and see it as a part of who you are, not something standing separate from you. And it also, your soul wants you to persevere. And this is what Grumpy did in, in, the, in the story of Snow White and the Seven Doors. Wants you to have this perseverance, which shows a greater degree of determination to achieve what you need to achieve in your life. Your soul has a divine plan. It has a divine mission. 
And sometimes because we're not sure what that divine plan or mission is, we don't have a North Star. And our soul is our North Star. And our soul is evolving and trying to grow into being more Christ-like in interactions and thoughts and words and deeds. Evolving towards that Christ-like quality, which also is evolving towards being more a part of what the Creator is, the I Am Presence, the Atman, that true source, and being an outpost of the divinity of that source. Not going or exhibiting the qualities of grumpy or resentment, which only creates that barrier and circling back, it creates this hardness of heart. So where there is hardness of heart, it's hard to feel our soul. It's hard to be in contact with that soul sensitivity that guides us, that's guiding us and aiding us. And it also moves us off the path of being more Christ-like in our interactions, in our thoughts, and in our words, and in our deeds, being kind, being considerate, and giving people the benefit of the doubt. Giving people the benefit of the doubt because we're on a planet that is imperfect. None of us is perfect. None of us are going to do it right 24-7. And that's not what God's looking for. God is not looking to human perfection. He's looking for the quality of your heart, the quality of your love, the quality of your patience, the quality of your ability to forgive, the quality of your ability to let go and work on letting go, work on forgiving, work on seeing things from the perspective of what would Jesus do in this situation? What would Buddha do in this situation? What would Mother Teresa do in this situation? You know, is we're looking at the higher qualities that's the soul evolutionary path. That's what the soul is wanting, is that for you to keep focus on that star of the highest good and the highest level of evolution that you can be each and every day. So it does require moving out of grumpy, this grumpy grudges and this uh, revolving resentment in which the mind is going on and on and on about what the person did and when they did it and how they did it and the grumpiness. And it's just building these more greater potholes in, in self and also creating a degree of inharmony within oneself. And so just as you can have hardness of heart because of the holding of long-term of these grudges and resentment, you can also create the hardness of heart um, because you have decided that you're not going to allow a person or a situation or event to happen to you again, as opposed to asking God, God, what, what's going on that this situation is happening? What's going on that this situation is happening? What is it that I need to see? Help me to see it. Guide me by bringing people into my life, they can help me to be the best person that I can be. And when it comes to these buildup of grudges, we feel it somewhere in our body. We feel it. And so we have to be able to say, I don't want to feel this anymore. I don't want to feel this out of alignment state. It's like, uh, you know, when the pothole, when your car hits a deep pothole, it can have put your alignment out <laughs> in your car. Well, we don't. We want to be back in alignment. And to go back into alignment means there must be a degree of harmony with the internally within us. There must be a degree in which we're creating space just for God to flow into us by meditation, by prayer, by fiats that we do, um, by putting our attention to things that we want more of not putting our attention to things that we want less of. Why are we going to put our attention to grudges and resentments that only builds up more of that? Why not put our attention to what we do want, which is harmony and peace, and mantras that relate to harmony and peace, and passages in the Bible that relates to harmony and peace, 
and inspirational readings that give us something to put our attention to, put our minds to, put our ability to meditate to. And I put our attention to having a song that is uplifting, that is inspiring, that we can harmonize and hum. That we can hum to, as a way of self-soothing ourselves. So there are like fundamental things that I want you to begin to think about as we leads to this grumpy grudges. Grumpy actually showed us in Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Underneath this crustiness of his grumpiness was a fundamental desire of wanting the best for Snow White. And so he became her protector, very loyal, persistent, and determined. That's what our soul wants to. Think of Snow White and think of our soul in the innocence of our soul. And that innocence and that light and love. Because Snow White represents kindness, a gentle nature. Nature, same qualities of the soul. So we have to be protecting. And this is what Grumpy, in the positive way, was doing. is by learning to flip that grumpiness of the outer self, the ego persona, and move it into another quality. It's like decided to no longer take the low road, but decided to take the high road. And the high road was those qualities I mentioned before of loyalty, perseverance, and being willing to be the protector of Snow White, the protector of the soul. And when we're able to do that, that empowers us, helps us to dissolve the grudges because we see that there's something greater than the grudges. We see that our soul is trying to navigate through a situation and we are willing to ask our higher self, the angels, the masters of light, love and peace to help us and help learn how to operate and be in a different way. How to change our behaviors, change the old garments into new garments of light, love, peace, and gratitude. Think about how you can change some of the grumpy feelings or thoughts that you're having and immediately pivot and make a change and ask for harmony and peace to manifest where you are. Have a favorite book that you can be able to read. Have a scriptural passage that you can go through with yourself that is soothing, that is uplifting, but you say no to grudges, no longer here. Make sense? Try it. Something to think about. Bye for now. Thank you for joining me for this episode on Mastering Life's Adventures, being your best self through soul evolution. If you have enjoyed what you've heard today, I would be delighted if you would share this episode with others. Leave a thumbs up and subscribe to my Mastering Life's Adventures podcast. Look forward to your joining the next episode. Please leave any comments or suggestions you might have below. Bye for now.